Sir Andrew Caldcott was a British writer and colonial administrator. Born in Boxley, Kent in 1884, the son of Reverend Andrew Caldcott and Isabel Mary Johnson. Educated at Uppingham School in Rutland and Exeter College, Oxford, he joined the colonial office in 1907, being sent to Malaya, where he held various positions, up to colonial secretary and president of the Football Association of Malaysia until 1935, when he became governor of Hong Kong. In 1936, he was sent to Sri Lanka to become governor there, a post he held until 1944. In 1918, he married Olive Mary Innes, who died in 1943. In 1946, he married Evelyn May Vollmer. He died in 1951 in Pierpoint, Sussex. He published two collections of ghost stories. The first was Not Exactly Ghosts in 1947. Many of the stories take place in a fictional African colony named in rather uninventive fashion, Congea. In A Room in a Rectory, the new rector Tilchington, Nigel Tilethorpe, sees an old window out of keeping with the rest of the church and decides to have it walled up. But when he examines it in more depth, he sees it depicts Archangel Michael trampling the body of Satan with the inscription, The Triumph of Authority over Intelligence, dating to 1788 and signed as Nicholas Fane. Soon he discovers the empty room, which he had quarrelled over with his housekeeper, was the room of Nicholas Fame, a former rector Tilchington, who was accused of diabolism. As the rector stays in the room, he has strange dreams featuring Fane committing all sorts of heinous devilry, and during the day the rector finds himself making occult allusions in his sermons that turn his parishioners away due to their very Manichaean leanings, branch line to Bensiston, as a man wished for the death of Paul Saxon, partner at his firm, then Paul dies of influenza and all is well, until the man is on a train, and the train takes a turn that doesn't exist, landing him in a town where he should not be, and where he is accused of murder. When he swoons and comes to, he is on the real train, but any time he faints, he finds himself back at Bensiston, accused of murder. Sonata in D minor is a story of murder and tragedy, and of a gramophone record, hearing which drives people to murder each other. The Pump in Thorpe Spinney is a story of an old pump, madness, starvation, and death in the Thorpe Spinney drain. Whiffs of the Sea concerns a man being pestered by the smell of the sea in a way he cannot describe. Eventually, an old painting of the harbour leads its friends in search of an old smuggler's boy, whose contents are related to the painting in a very personal way. In due course, has Alec Jutson, on finding his uncle being in such good health that a speedy inheritance is out of the question, decides to hurry things along with a lampshade and some shadow puppets. Light in the Darkness relates how Martin Lorimer, Professor Takeokuta in Kongea, was irritated when his pupils wished for an absence to attend the Sadilina pilgrimage to worship the Holy Gleam. He insists he go with them to prove it is only a phosphorus and mushroom, but when he does so, he finds he's not alone in the cave. The Castroland concerns John Mainbarrow, an artist, who feels himself compelled to continue the work of an artist who lost his eyes and killed himself, the image of whom haunts Mainbarrow in his dreams. A victim of Medusa is the story of Herbert Sidon, and how he met his end due to his fascination with the occult and with jellyfish. Fits of the Blues has D. Lenbury swipe a sapphire meant for a vengeful Kungian goddess, messing with his sight to make him see blue when there isn't any, which is a lot worse than it sounds. 